Hello everyone, this is Ahiti from Edureka and today I'm going to discuss about various setups that you require to run the Springboard projects for microservices. So before we start with the session, let me take you to the agenda of this session. We will first start by looking into the basic system requirements to run the Spring Boot projects. Then I would be talking on how you can download and install Java on Windows 10 operating system. After that, we'll be looking at two different approaches to run the Spring Boot projects. That is, one by using a Spring Startup plugin in Eclipse and other with a CLI setup and a Apache Maven. In this video, I would be also creating a Hello World example project and run it using both the approaches. So let's get started with the session. Well, the basic system requirements that I may suggest for you is that you have a minimum memory of 512 MB to 1 GB, a Java version of 1.8.0, a processor speed of minimum 800 MHz to 1.5 GHz, and a free disk space of minimum 300 MB. Now, as we have seen, the Java is a basic system requirement. Before I move forward to tell you how to download and install Java, let me brief you a little bit about Java. Well, Java is a programming language and a computing platform released by the Sun Microsystems in the year of 1995. So just in case, if you want to run any Java applications, then Java runtime environment is fine. But if you also want to develop Java applications, then you must install Java Development Kit. Now let us get into how to download and install Java. To download and install Java, open your favorite browser and type Java JDK. The first website that you see is from the Oracle website. Underneath the link, you see that there are various options provided by the Oracle website to download different versions of Java, such as Java SC Development Kit 8, Java SC Development Kit 9, JDK 7, etc. In this video, I would be downloading Java SC Development Kit 8. So click on it. Once the website opens, you see that the Oracle website offers different versions of Java to download for various operating systems such as Linux, Solaris, Mac OS, and Windows. In this video, I would be downloading for Windows with 64-bit. So before you click on the executable file, what you have to do is accept the license agreement by clicking on this radio button and then click on this downloadable executable file. So click on it. You see that Java starts downloading. So until Java is being downloaded, let me show you how to check your system properties. So go to Start. Right click on this PC, go to more and properties. You'll see a control panel window opening up showing the basic information about your computer, such as processor, installed memory, system type, etc. In my case, I have a Windows with 64 bit operating system and with an 8 GB RAM. So let me minimize this. Okay, now the executable file has been downloaded. So let's go to downloads. And you see that Java has been downloaded. Double click on this. Now we can see that there's a wizard which opens up which says welcome to the installation of Java SC Development Kit 8. Click Next. Make sure that you choose the development tools and again click Next. Here Java starts installing. Now choose the destination folder. In my case, I've chosen C Program Files Java and click Next. After Java has been installed, you see a wizard which opens up and says Java Development Kit 8 has been successfully installed. Click on Close. Once Java has been installed on your PC, you have to set the environment variables in Java. For that, go to Start, right click on this PC, go to More and Properties. A control panel window opens up showing all the basic information. Now, click on Advanced System Settings. Here, go to Environment Variables. And over here, add a new variable by clicking on the option new and type the name as java underscore home. In the variable value, add the directory of your Java JDK folder. So let's go to this PC, C, program files, Java, JDK, right click here, copy the address and paste it over here. Click on OK. After this is done, you also have to edit the path variable. So go to path. Click on edit and over here, append the Java bin folder. So go to pin, right click here, copy the address, click on here and paste. Once it is pasted, click on OK and even in this window, click on OK. Finally, to check whether Java has been installed or not, go to command prompt and type Java space hyphen version. You can see that the Java version 1.8 has been installed. 
So that is how you can download and install Java. Now let's move further and see two different approaches to run the Spring Boot projects. The first approach I'm going to explore for you guys is by using a Spring Startup plugin in Eclipse and the other approach I'm going to explore for you guys is by using a Spring Boot CLI with the Apache Maven. So let me start with the first approach. Before we get into how to download and install Eclipse and use the Spring Startup plugin in it, let me just brief you a little bit about Eclipse and the tool we are going to use. Well, Eclipse is an integrated development environment containing a base workspace and an extensible plugin system for customizing the environment. So basically, you can deal with various kinds of projects like web-based projects, Android applications, software projects, and others. Coming to a Spring Startup plugin that is the Spring Tool Suite is an Eclipse-based development environment that is customized for developing Spring applications. So it is basically a ready-to-use environment to implement, debug, run, and deploy Spring applications. Now let us start by downloading and installing Eclipse. To download and install Eclipse, go to your favorite browser and type Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. Open the first link that shows up that is from the official website of Eclipse. As the page opens up, on the left side, you can see that there's a list of various Eclipse releases. And on the right side, there's a list of various download links. In this video, I'm going to download for Eclipse Oxygen Package since it's the latest one. So click on Oxygen Packages. Now, in the next link that opens up, click on Eclipse ID for Java EE developers. Now, on the right side from the Download Links list, choose according to your operating system. Since I have a Windows with 64-bit, I'll click on Windows with 64-bit. In the next page that you're redirected to, click on this Download button. Well, you can now see that Eclipse JE Oxygen has started downloading. Okay, now you can see that Eclipse Oxygen has been downloaded. So let's go to Downloads again. And you can see that the Eclipse has been downloaded here. So let's extract these files to a specific folder. Let's say C. Click on OK. Now you can see that Eclipse folder is getting extracted to the C drive. Now let's minimize this. And go to C drive, you see that there's a folder named Eclipse. Open this, and here inside the folder, you can see an application file of the name Eclipse. So double click on it. This launches the Eclipse application. Choose the directory for your Eclipse workspace, like I have chosen C user site, and then click on launch. Well, now your Eclipse application has started. To download the Spring Startup plugin, Go to Help, go to Eclipse Marketplace, and type Spring Tool Suit. Over here, click on Install. A dialog box opens up with various options. Make sure you have selected all the options and click on Confirm. Click on this radio button to accept the license agreements, and then click on Finish. You can see at the bottom that the software starts installing. If you get this warning, click on Install anyway. This will continue your installation. Now, after the software has been installed, a dialog box opens up which says Restart Eclipse. So click on Restart now. So finally, you can see that your Eclipse has restarted. Now, to create a Spring Boot project, click on File, go to New, and choose Spring Starter Project. Now, a window opens up. In this window, you have to choose the following for your project, such as name, group ID, artifact ID, etc. So let's suppose I choose the name as hello underscore world and the group ID as com.edureka. And make sure the package here is a combination of the group ID and the name. So package name would be com edureka.hello underscore world. Make sure you've chosen Maven as a type and click on finish. In this window, you have to choose the dependencies for your project. So let's suppose I choose web and then click on finish. On the left side in the project explorer, you can see that the Spring Tool Suite has created a Spring Boot project for us. Now let us explore the project structure of this project. Well, this project has an auto-created Java file, which acts as an entry point for the application. This project also has a bomb.xml file, which houses all the dependencies required for this project. Now, 
This application is ready as a standalone application and we can definitely launch it, but I would be adding a configuration Java file to it so that it can handle HTTP requests. So to add the file, go to the package, right click on this package, go to new and choose class. In this window, choose the name of your Java file. Let's say application configuration file. Click on finish. Now here, to handle the HTTP request, we need to import two annotations that are the REST controller and request mapping. So to import these, let's type import space org dot spring framework dot web dot bind dot annotation dot request mapping and put a semicolon at the end of it. Similarly, also import the REST controller. So for that, type import space org dot spring framework dot web dot bind dot annotation dot rest controller. After importing both the annotations, create a method inside the configuration class which can be called when an HTTP request is made. So type at the rate request mapping and in brackets and double quotes let's suppose i want to pass the request slash hello now create a method with a spring now let's suppose when we pass the request slash hello we want to return hello world so type hello world and close the brackets and save this file now to run this project right click on this project Go to run and choose a Spring Boot app. At the bottom of the console, you can see that Tomcat has started on port number 8080 and the Hello World application has started. To check whether the application is working or not, go to the browser and type localhost colon 8080 slash hello. You can see that the output comes as hello world. This means that our application is working. Now let me show you the second approach that is by using Spring Boot CLI and Apache Maven. But before that, let me brief you a little bit about Maven and Spring Boot. Maven is a powerful project management tool that is based on project object model. It is basically used for projects build, dependencies and documentations. Coming to Spring Boot CLI, Spring Boot makes it easy to create Spring powered production grade applications and services. Now, let me show you how to download and install Maven first. To download Maven, go to your browser and type Pache Maven download. Click on the first link that opens up. Now scroll down and go to the file section. Here, choose the zip file that you want to download. Let's say Apache Maven 3.5.3 bin zip. On the left side, you can see that Maven has started downloading. Okay, now let's go to downloads. You can see now that Maven has been downloaded. Let's extract these files to a specific folder. Let's say C and click OK. Let's go to C drive now. And now you can see that the Maven files have been extracted to the C folder. Similar to Java, you also have to set the environment variables for Maven. So for that, go to start, right click on this PC, go to more and properties. A control panel window opens up. Go to advanced system settings, click on environment variables, and here add a new variable with the name m2 underscore home. In the variable value, add the path of your Maven folder. So go to the folder, right click here, copy the address and paste it here. Click on OK. Once it is done, also add one more variable with the name maven underscore home pointing to the same path. So click on new and type maven underscore home and paste the same directory here. Click on OK. Once it is done, you also have to edit the path variable. So go to path, click on edit, and now over here, add the directory of the Maven bin folder. So open bin, copy the address, click on new, and paste it here. Then click on OK, and again click on OK. Once this is done, to check whether Maven has been installed or not, go to command prompt and type mvn space hyphen hyphen version. You can see that Apache Maven 3.5.3 has been successfully installed. Now, to install the Spring Boot CLI, what you have to do is go to the browser and type Spring Boot CLI download. Open the first link that you can see in the browser. 
scroll down and under the manual installation download the zip folder so click on that and you can see that springboard cli zip folder is getting downloaded once it's downloaded go to downloads and extract these files to a specific folder let's say c and click on ok once the file has been extracted to C drive, you can see a folder named Spring 2.0 release. Similar to Maven, you also have to set the environment variables for Spring. So for that, go to Start, right-click on this PC, go to More and Properties. In the Control Panel window, go to Advanced System Settings, click on Environment Variables, and now over here, add a new variable with the name Spring underscore Home. So type Spring underscore Home and in the variable value, add the directory of the Spring folder. So right click here and copy the address and paste it here. Click on OK. Once this is done, you also have to update the path variable and append the Spring bin folder. So go to path, click on edit and go back to the folder, choose bin, right click here, copy the address, click on new and paste it here. And again, click on OK. Then click on OK. Once this is done, to check whether Spring has been installed or not, go to command prompt and type Spring space hyphen hyphen version. You can see that Spring CLI version 2.0 release has been installed. Now, to run your Spring Boot projects, what you have to do is you have to change the working directory of your command prompt to the project directory. So let's suppose I have a project on the desktop. I'll open it. I'll right click here. I'll copy the address. I'll go back to command prompt. I'll type the command cd space and paste the address here. Now click on enter. This changes the working directory of your project. Now, to run the Spring Boot project, you have to type the command mbn space spring hyphen boot colon run and click on enter. This starts building your Spring Boot project. Once this is done, at the end of the console, you can see that the Tomcat has started on port number 8080 and the application Hello World has started. Now to check whether our application is working or not, let's go back to browser and type localhost colon 8080 slash hello. This prints hello world. That means the application is working fine. So guys, that's all for this session today. I hope it was informative. Thank you.